Hey everybody, welcome back for another video short, even though this video may not be quite as short as usual. But you know what? You know it's going to be a good day whenever I'm not in front of the camera and I can do one of these nifty little screen records. So, lucky you. Today we're going to take a quick look at the high points of the graduated filter tool across all of Adobe's editing platforms as far as still images are concerned. We're going to look at it here in Lightroom Classic CC. We're also going to look at it in Lightroom Creative Cloud, the web-based version of Lightroom. And we're going to, why not, take a look at it in the uh, Adobe Camera Raw here over in Photoshop. So, let's uh, get started here. This is Lightroom Classic, and if you're used to the old standalone versions of Lightroom, this is uh, what's probably going to be the most familiar to you. If you didn't know, uh, graduated filter uh, is uh, the graduated filter tool here in Lightroom across all the platforms is more or less the digital evolution of the graduated neutral density filter, that physical glass, usually glass filter that goes in front of your lens. It's got that uh, hard or soft gradation that goes down. It helps out a lot with taming down skies. There's even uh, something called a reverse graduated neutral density filter, a, a split graduated neutral density filter where it has the uh, darkening in the middle. But we're not going to talk about that because that's just another rabbit hole we don't need to go down. To get started here in Lightroom Classic, we're going to click on the little graduated filter icon here in the develop module of Lightroom. Now you can either click on this uh, icon or you can use keyboard shortcut M and that is going to bring up the graduated filter tool panel. Now once we have the graduated filter tool panel open up here, you'll notice that we can essentially apply all of our basic adjustments with a local graduated filter tool. Now this is uh, the same for the radial filter and the filter brush, or the uh, adjustment brush rather, but uh, we're going to be focusing on the graduated filter tool here today. The only thing you can apply with a graduated filter is the tone curve and the HSL panel and the split toning. Everything else you can do, your exposure, your contrast, uh, your white, black clipping, anything like that, the presence, that's your dehaze, your clarity, your texture, that kind of thing, as well as sharpness and noise reduction. Pretty cool. So anyway, uh, to apply your graduated filter, you can uh, really, from any direction, you can just click and drag, and that is going to draw your filter. I'll talk about this in just a second, but let me go ahead and turn on that where you can see it. Uh, just click and drag. Let me go back here so I didn't have that turned on. There we go. Click and drag that down. Or if you want to make a really straight graduated filter, all you do is hold down the shift key and drag, and that is going to automatically keep that graduated filter straight or you can make it vertical the same way. Pretty cool there. So I'm just going to make some really obvious adjustments here with the graduated filter tool so you can see what's going on. Put the contrast in there. Okay, there we go. So you can, from here, edit your graduated filter tool using either the brush, which you can paint in the effect that you've uh, you've already used here with the uh, or the effects from the sliders you've uh, selected there, you can paint in, or let me turn on the uh, mask overlay here. Again, we'll talk more about that in just a second. You can actually erase, which is even more versatile. Honestly, you can erase the effects that you've put in selectively, and that comes in extremely handy when you're really wanting to dial in the effects from your graduated filter. And while we're talking about how you can tailor your graduated filter, let's talk about the range mask for just a second. And I'll stop here, folks. Uh, the reason why I'm doing a lot of this in Lightroom Classic is that many of these points are going to carry over to Lightroom Creative Cloud and Adobe Camera raw. I'll talk about the differences once we get there, but most of the things you're seeing here are going to be across all the platforms, so don't worry. So anyway, uh, back in, uh, I think it's about a 
year and a half ago now in uh, Lightroom Classic version 7.2, Adobe introduced something called the Range Mask for their local adjustments, and that includes the graduated filter. What it lets you do is click and independently apply the uh, effects, whatever effects that you want with the graduated filter based on colors. So if you wanted to apply brightness to just the yellows, just the greens, just the blues, you can do that by selecting it with the dropper tool here. Or you can do the essentially the same thing based on uh, luminance values. So if you wanted to apply the effect to just the shadows, we can do that. Just the highlights, same thing. Or just the midtones, we can do that too. Really cool. The luminance mask, if you do a lot of landscape photography, it's essentially like having a luminosity mask. It works on the same principle. And you can dial in the effect of that graduated filter based on the brightness levels in different areas of your image. Really cool. I will mention this. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you folks. I absolutely hate the next thing I'm going to mention, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. This caused me a lot of problems when we were updating the uh, my Lightroom Mastery ebook and the Decoding Lightroom video course. And that is uh, the depth range mask. Um, I couldn't get anything out of Adobe uh, when I reached out to them for a little bit of help with that. So uh, yeah, there's essentially it's it works on the HEIC file, which is essentially another version of a JPEG file that you find in a lot of today's iPhones. I think the iPhone 10, something like that, which I don't use. And uh, I tried four or five different people who used iPhones. We could never get it to work, but I know there is one or two videos floating around on YouTube here. Uh, that explains a little bit more about the depth range mask. It operates off of pixel depth. Uh, like I said, it's uh, I'm not really personally know anybody that's ever been able to get it to work. So there's that. But if you do happen to want to try that out, it is there for you. And uh, if you get it to work, hey, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to know. Okay, just a couple more things to talk about here in Lightroom Classic before we move on to uh, Lightroom Creative Cloud and ACR. And that is uh, some ways to get these little pins that you see to be visible or not visible. Each one of these, and you can tell I've worked with this image quite a bit, each one of these little dots represents a graduated filter tool. And if we click on them, we can go in and edit all the stuff that we've done to each individual tool. Now you may or may not want to see those. If you uh, want to change all that, you can use the keyboard shortcut H to toggle in between the different visibilities. It's on auto now, so that means if I go up, there we go, if I go up and like hover on the image, it's going to automatically show. You can uh, go in between uh, always, which is going to leave them up all the time, and never or just show the selected one. So you've got quite a few options down here and you get to it with that show edit pins option here at the bottom left. One more thing that you can do, actually two more things that you can do here, is show that selected mask overlay. That is going to show you where the adjustments of your particular graduated filter are dialed into what's part of the image. And you can toggle your colors here in Lightroom Classic of that mask by going up to Tools, going to Adjustment Mask Overlay, and selecting whatever color you want. I'm going to change it to white there. But if you don't want to do that, you can do the uh, keyboard shortcut Shift O, and that is going to let you cycle through those a little bit easier than having to go up and select it from the Tools drop down there. Again, another really cool feature here in Lightroom. All right, finally, moving on, we're going to uh, shift out of Lightroom Classic and move over to Lightroom Creative Cloud. This is the web-based version of uh, Lightroom Classic. Um, it's actually, I, sh I should use it more, to be honest with you. It's a lot more intuitive than, uh, obviously, working in Lightroom Classic. It's a lot more clean, and uh, it's very similar when it comes to working with the graduated filter. You have the little icon over here to the right. They call it the linear gradient here in uh, Lightroom Creative Cloud. You can either click on that or use keyboard shortcut L. And it works exactly the same way as it did in Lightroom Classic. I've already got one drawn here. You can use all the same basic adjustments, not the split toning, not the tone curve, and not the HSL panel, though. You have the options to paint in with a gradient brush and to erase. 
and everything else uh, works pretty much exactly the same. That's kind of a refreshing thing to have, uh, just that carryover. I will say though, as far as I know, you cannot use, here in Lightroom Creative Cloud, you cannot use a range mask with your local adjustments, at least not in any way that I've found. So that is a big difference between using the graduated filter tool here in Lightroom Creative Cloud as opposed to Lightroom Classic. So keep that in mind. All right, that's short and sweet here in Lightroom Creative Cloud. Let's jump on over to Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw is one of the, um, essentially the precursor to Lightroom as we know it now. And if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic and even Lightroom Creative Cloud, you're gonna have no trouble at all using the graduated filter tool here in Adobe Camera Raw. You have the same little icon that you're used to from the other two uh, platforms. The keyboard shortcut has changed though. You can either click on the icon or you can use keyboard shortcut G and you're gonna be able to draw your graduated filter exactly the same way. If you want to hold down the shift key to make it really straight, you have a few more options than you did in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Creative Cloud. You can, I don't know, this may be 20 degree increments here, and it's going to snap to and make it a lot easier with a lot more versatility to make your graduated filter a little bit more straight right out of the gate there. Uh, the big difference here you're going to notice though, uh, you don't have that median line like you do in the other two programs. You have a green and a red dot. Now green means go, red means stop. You're going to have the gradient going from the most intense from the green to the least intense down to the red. So that's how you can keep an eye on where your adjustments are going to be applied here in Adobe Camera Raw. And just like with uh, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC, uh, you know, Lightroom Creative Cloud, you have the options to turn your mask overlay on and off so you can toggle in between seeing those dots. Uh, I think that's with, yeah, keyboard shortcut V if you don't want to use the little checkbox there. And we also have the option to go with our mask overlay colors. Actually, a little bit, a little bit more... Uh, versatility here in Adobe Camera Raw than you do in the other two programs because you can one you know check the box to turn it on and off or use keyboard short, uh, shortcut Y but you can dial in an infinite amount of colors yeah for your mass overlay pretty sweet if you're uh, really into customizing your tools uh, Adobe Camera Raw will probably be probably be the uh, best bet for you when it comes to having uh, custom mask colors for your graduated filter tool you know if that's important to you more power to you why not so yeah Adobe Camera Raw it's one of the older versions of the graduated filter tool actually probably the oldest version of the graduated filter tool but it really is the exact same thing as using it in Lightroom. You have everything that you would in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Creative Cloud, including those range masks, the color range masks, the luminance range masks, and that loathsome depth range mask that I hate so much. All right, uh, I think that's really going to do it here for uh, Adobe Camera Raw. And in fact, I think that's going to be it for uh, talking about the graduated filter tool across all the versions of Adobe's photo editing software, Lightroom Classic, uh, Lightroom CC, and of course Adobe Camera Raw that we just talked about. An extremely versatile and powerful tool, guys. I really can't talk about it enough. The graduated filter tool or just the local adjustment tool, uh, tools in general here in Lightroom. If you want to go a little bit more in depth, uh, please check out my Lightroom Mastery ebook. As far as I know, it's the most up-to-date, most comprehensive tell-all on uh, Lightroom Classic that there is. And uh, Decoding Lightroom, if you want to see me talk to you for a while about everything that you would need to know about Lightroom, uh, Lightroom Classic that is, please check out that Decoding Lightroom video course. It's all over at Contrastly.com. And of course, you know, I'm going to put the links down in the description if you want to learn more about that.
So uh, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I hope you uh, learned more than you knew already about the graduated filter tool across all these platforms. If you have any more questions about it or if I can clarify anything, please don't hesitate to post it down in the comments and I will do my absolute best to get back with you as soon as I can. But until then, I am Adam Welch. Thanks a lot for joining me here, guys, and I will see you next time.